Council meeting March 21st, 2024, starting time is 7.05. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Moment of silence for all our military who never came home, one overseas, one and the ones here, and also all our men and women in blue. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see everybody. Um, we need a uh, roll call. President Bowen. Here. Vice President Murphy. Present. Mr. Blaylock. Here. Ms. Dunlap. Here. Mr. Glasson. Here. Mrs. Wagner. Present. Uh, before we uh, started our meeting, we met in an executive session. Mr. Flagger. Mr. President, we met in an executive session to discuss various legal matters, litigation, of police matters, personnel matters, and real estate. Thank you. Monthly reports are available to, for review in a township's manager's office. Public comments will be taken on land of development, official action items. General comments will be taken during opportunity for residents to address council. Next, we have presentations. We have a 2023 year end review. And the first one is uh, the police department. And it looks like Lieutenant Winnick will be presenting that. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank council and the township manager uh, for your continued support of the police department. As you can see in our year end reviews, you're gonna see some of our numbers have gone down uh, crime across the board. So in 2023, that didn't show up. It's a good thing I have a copy. In, in 2023, we finished with uh, Chief Colton, myself and Lieutenant Cosgrove as lieutenants. We have six sergeants currently, six detectives and 42 police officers, and we have 57 total sworn police officers in Bristol Township, which is a number we keep continue to try to grow upon. Uh, it's a struggle across the nation to get officers in these positions, qualified officers. So in 2023, we responded and wrote incidents for 24,306 calls for service, which was up from 2022 by just over 800 uh, incidents. Our vehicular crashes were up, as you can see, 2023, uh, 1,463 vehicle crashes, which was up from 1,390 in 2022. We responded and investigated 44 robberies, which was down from 48 in 2022, 63 burglaries, which was down from 70 in 2022. The big one there, you're gonna see thefts were down to 642 in 2023, which was 846 in 2022. Uh, criminal mischiefs were also down. Uh, as you can see, overdose deaths were down. We only had 20 overdose deaths. That's a combination with uh, community outreach with our co-responder program, um, the use of medication that's been given out to the public and our uh, EMS response. We had 39 death investigations, which was down from 58 in 2022. Uh, natural deaths were up slightly in two, from 2022. As you can see, one of the big things that uh, has been an uptick throughout the nation, we are actually down. Uh, we had 23 weapons offense charges and investigations in 2023, which was down from 30 in 2022. Uh, again, in 2023, we continued uh, training. Active shooter training has been a staple for our police department. We're continuing with that and control tactics. That's uh, our, our tactics in which we take people into custody, as you know with the George Floyd incident and improper tactics were used in that situation. We train, it's state mandated as well, and we train in, in the building here. We have our own facility. 2023, we continued the co-responder program with Tullytown and Bristol Borough. Uh, that continues to grow. We um, are looking at uh, expanding that program into 2024. It's on the agenda? Okay, thank you. 
We, we engage in many uh, community outreach events uh, to build uh, relationships with our community. As you can see, uh, we have officers that go to the school just to greet them, to give them five, bring smiles to their face, just getting out there. We had trunk or treat for the kids in October. And the Civilian Police Academy is the picture to the right. We brought that back. It stopped after 2020 with COVID. We're looking to do it again and maybe increase this year to a youth police academy. It gives the, gives the community a chance to see how we do our job and what, what rules and stuff we have to follow. Uh, we're working on uh, police trade trading cards as well to give out to the community. We're going to develop a program where kids can kids can collect them and earn uh, gifts throughout the year. And you can see 2023, we hired five more officers uh, to help pre prevent and reduce crime. Big portion with, with those numbers that you saw with that, that crime was down. Uh, we, we had proactivity up from officers where they're making contact with the public. That's, that's police presence. That's us making contact with the public, which drives numbers down. The 2024 goals, um, our goal is to provide professional service uh, very efficiently. Our goal is not to just put a ton of cops out there. We're trying to work efficiently, efficiently with doing so. Part of that is implementing the drone program, uh, installing neighborhood camera systems and upgrades. That's going to help us uh, be more efficient. We uh, LPRs, license plate recognition, software and cameras are up throughout the county, and that's being continuing to grow. We're solving crimes daily. Uh, our, we're sharing our resources with areas uh, and other agencies such as Ben Salem, Falls Township, to help solve crimes. We're looking to hire approximately 10 well-trained officers. Again, that's well-trained. Uh, we we want quality officers. Uh, we can go out and hire whoever we want. It's very tough to get quality officers. Quality officers uh, allows us to give quality service to the community. We're, we're looking to continue to engage. We have seven slated to be hired, most likely in April. We're going to continue our uh, training uh, throughout uh, the year. Uh, we're looking to promote qualified supervisors to increase and, and provide proper oversight for our personnel. And we're looking, again, to continue the co-responder program. One thing we're looking to add to, we added a, a Instagram account. We were trying to move in and reach out to more of our residents. We're going to be uh, posting a lot of our data. These incidents that you see, we're going to start posting them monthly on our social media and our website so, so the residents can see how many incidents we're responding to on a monthly basis. It'll be up and running as soon as Officer Stone's back to work. Well, it'll be Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Is that all? That is. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Great to see you, well, Lieutenant. Thank you so much. Next, we have a presentation, Park and Recre Recreation Department, Brian Morris. Brian, great to see you. Hi, Brian. Hello. There we go. I always end up doing that. Uh, first and foremost, again, I second CJ. Thank you guys for your support for everything you do for us at the township. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, talk about the accomplishments that we had last year. Um, we grew the, the department with more employees. Uh, which afforded us the opportunity to do some more activities around the park with uh, the splash pad in particularly uh, maybe having having more seasonal uh, splash pad attendance. Uh, we had that for the full year, uh, which was a, a great thing with uh, no no issues, which was wonderful. Um, we utilized the entire park for more practices, games and events. Um, Jair does a terrific job, our events coordinator, with getting all the schedules and everything set up on my rec. We've had some new groups this year, as you'll see in my next presentation. Um, our campus sold out three years in a row. Well, this year you can count four. We added um, 10 more kids, and we did up the price for the first time, $100 in a couple years, and we sold out in four days. So I think that's a credit to Jair, the counselors, Dana, um, all that those guys do, and our staff. Um, it's a camp that has been extremely successful because of those guys and the kids we hire to help us run it. 
Uh, we upgraded some playground structures, in particularly Main Avenue. Um, our public works guys do a terrific job. You'll get to see that picture as we move down the slides. Um, two things that I'm extremely proud of. One of the things I believe in is bigger and better, and that's kind of the motto that I've had with a lot of the programs we ran. When I first got here National Night Out, we probably had anywhere roughly from 700 to 800 people. It was a two-hour event. Last year, we upped it an hour. We had over 3,000 people here. Um, which was really, you know, a testament some of the, to some of the things that we added and, and more of the people that got involved. And um, it, it was a lot of fun. And I want to commend, obviously, you know, we had a lot of police presence last year, and there was a lot of kids over in that section, which was really neat. And I think the card program is going to be awesome. So thank you guys for all you do. Um, and then our concert series. We had three different concerts, and um, we had over 1,500 people that we ran ourselves, uh, aside from the Bristol Riverside Theater. And the concerts were a success. That was something that we tried, and we were extremely happy and, and proud of what we did with those, and we're going to look to continue to grow them this year. Uh, just some pictures. These are some of the groups that uh, are staples here, that are always here. CAS is a professional soccer program. Uniteville is a great soccer uh, program as well. The War Dogs and uh, the Lacrosse, Lower Bucks Lacrosse, you can see them throughout the week. They're all here. Um, this slide is awesome. This is a picture that I actually took off our website, but it's a beautiful picture of our splash pad. And um, again, that's what it looks like during the summer. And again, we're implementing a program. Uh, we had a lot of kids that came through camps last summer that wanted to come utilize our facilities. So we're working out a program where we're, we're going to allow that, but we're going to, you know, open up our concession stand and do more things over in that area to make it even better. Uh, just some pictures from our summer camp. Again, another successful program. Uh, just some of the things that are in-house and out-of-house that we do on the fields. Uh, summer camp field trips. Um, all those, those four are a hit. We've been to the Eagles Stadium, the Philly Stadium, uh, Sesame Place, Big Kahuna, or have been staples, so they've been a lot of fun with the kids. Uh, Bristol Riverside Theater concerts last year. They only had two concerts here. They were pretty good. Roots and Boots. And then we talked about National Night Out. It's a great picture of um, the, the staff and a lot of the police that were here. Next up is our fall festival, um, which was just amazing. Let's this year. To me personally, we had to cancel Fall Fest twice. And when I went to Randy, thank God, she was gracious enough to say, hey, let's try it one more time. And I have to be honest with you, I mean, we had, we had to have over 5,000 people here. We were, parking was crazy. Um, but it was awesome, and I think a lot of it is a testament to our staff, a testament to the volunteers, a lot of the workers here that come and help us out, um, certainly Jess Ireland and her mom and some of the other staff that we have, even some of our counselors come back and help, and certainly the council and all that you guys do. It's, it's bigger and better. That's my philosophy, and it's been growing each year, so thank you guys for that. Um, So these are our new uh, programs that we have with Jumpstart Sports. As you, uh, I alluded to last year, we started with those guys, and we did the last two years. We had soccer and t-ball that were a hit. Tried some other programs. Soccer and t-ball have been our staple. I'm happy to report that you only need 10 to run a program. Soccer and t-ball are already filled. They're over 10. And um, Jumpstart Sports, we're doing an outdoor volleyball program, and we have eight kids already signed up. It's not till June. And uh, that's for our older group, and we have six for our younger group. And, I know my parish in, in uh, so over at St. Ephraim's, there's a lot of kids that are looking to come to this. So I know they're going to sell out as well. And that's a great deal because we have an 80-20 split with them, and they bring coaches, and they do everything for the kids. So it's, it's nice. They get a certificate and a T-shirt as well. These were our concerts I talked about last year. Um, the Soul Cruisers, who will be back, uh, Frontiers, and Shot of Southern, who will be back. Um, and the two other concerts that I want to mention, we have a great uh, band called the Buzzer Band. Uh, I know Craig knows them, and certainly um, we have a band called Legacy, and they're both really popular bands, and we expect them to bring just as many people, um, and our numbers are going to grow. The beauty of the concerts that I want to say is last year, having over 1,500 tickets and sold, not one ticket was sold online. So if you think about that, the draw that these people and where they come from, this year, we set it up on MyRec, tickets are here. We're already starting to sell tickets, and we're selling them online, and we added a concert. So we're really confident that the numbers are going to grow, and that's going to be more successful as well. Next up again, if you look at the before and after, Charlie and the, his staff just do an amazing job. Our public works guys are great. This is a picture of Main Avenue, and that's after. You can see the structure, the softball, the borders around it. They just, they've done a terrific job. So 
we're not here, but we appreciate Public Works and all that they do. Uh, again, I, I mentioned the concession stand during our splash pad hours. We're going to be open up for lunch. We're going to have snacks. We're hiring seasonal employees, some hot dogs, pretzels, different things. We're putting a camp program together for outside camps. They want to come and utilize it, maybe a little package together for those to generate more money. And uh, we have a whole sheet now of uh, sponsorships that we're going over, and we're going to, you know, the goal is to get more banners and signs up um, of just sponsors and people that, you know, would promote their business along, you know, the fence at some of our uh, fields. So that's the uh, 2023. Our goals for 2024 is to continue to build on the concert series at the amphitheater. Uh, again, we added a concert, and with the tickets online, as I already alluded to, I think we're going to do well with that. Uh, we increased our vendor truck price um, for the events for all of our events uh, and the concerts, so I think that's going to generate more money in concession stand. Uh, continuing to uh, promote new programs, events, recreational opportunities for all ages, abilities, cultures, and interests. Uh, create more field sponsorships, as I said, bringing uh, more revenue for our field renters. And um, through our park audits, uh, John Gillis, who works in our department, does a terrific job, and so does Dana. Dana has gone out, and it's something that she's looking to get into, and she's been working with John and does a terrific job with the audits, letting us know what needs to be fixed. You know, and working in conjunction with Public Works, we've we've developed a real good relationship, where we you know have a plan in place of what we're doing next, what park we're going to, what courts, and so on and so forth. Um, and then, also, I want to thank Craig, especially um, the signs for um, Kennedy printing. It has just been a terrific. I know that was your idea, and last year we we had signs made for a lot of our events, and you'll see next week all the um, Touch a Truck, which is a new event that we have. They're done. They're going to be going out next week. So uh, we're excited about that. So thanks for that. Uh, and the last thing is our new Parks and Rec building. Uh, to say we're excited to go in there would be a complete understatement. I've had lengthy conversations with Randy about the multiple opportunities that are going to be in that building for all of us. Um, we already have an art studio group that wants to come in. There's a STEM program, a possible after school, and eventually down the road, daycare. There's a plethora of different ideas and things that we're going to be able to utilize over there. So. Thank you guys for the support, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to have Thank it. you. Yeah. Thanks, Brian, Thanks. for that. Great job. Uh, so I just want to say uh, I've been here for a little over 10 years when we first came on council. Joe and I were the first ones. Um, we had a part-time park and recs, and I remember we had an event in this, over at the senior center. It was like a flea market or whatever. And the vendors were setting up, and uh, they were, where do we go? And I'm like, I don't know, wait for the park and recs. Well, she never showed up <laughs> until like 10.30. So to go from that, and not badgering or anything, but just it was not organized, to go from that in ten, 10 years to what we have going on now is just incredible. So just a great, it's great being part of it. So thank you, Brian. Uh, next, while we're really, oh, yes, we are. Building and planning, Bob Mateek. Hey, That's why we're all here, Bob. How are we doing? <laughs> Uh, just a third, what uh, Brian and CJ said, uh, thanks for your continued support and uh, your hard volunteer time here in the township. It's very appreciated. Um, so some of the accomplishments for my department in uh, 2023, uh, we did $1.14 million in permit revenue. Uh, numbers were down a little bit from uh, 2022 as due to the rising building cost and, um, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the, uh, the unknown <laughs> of the economy. Uh, we collected over 64000 in non-traffic citation fines um, and code enforcement effort to try and clean the township up. Uh, we issued 5,375 permits, managed several land development projects. We have uh, 26 in progress, 26 under review, 17 approved awaiting, uh, approved awaiting start now. Uh, we inspected 741 apartments and 218 houses managed and closed 880 code enforcement complaints, uh, blighted 15 vacant homes awaiting transfer to new owners. Um, we abated 12 properties in nuisance condition. Uh, we cut and maintained over 60 properties for lien with the new ordinance that council allowed us to adopt. Um, we're still out there serving administrative search warrants, securing properties, um, deeming them unsafe for human occupancy. And we updated several ordinances that were outdated. Here's one property that we uh, cleaned up in Golden Ridge, just to show you uh, some of the properties that we're dealing with out there. 
Um, some of the goals for 2024, continue to grow as a team and work towards our growth of consistency, communication, and public relations. Um, we're looking to go live with our new program in June or July. Um, we're also looking to do a complete overhaul of the zoning ordinance with help of our consultants um, to really update that and bring that up to uh, today's standards and to update uh, other ordinances that need updating that are, that are lacking and out of date. Um, and then just stay aggressive with code enforcement and continue to improve the township. Thank you, Bob. Sure thing. Thank you. Great job, Bob. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, we're going to move on here. We're going to be honoring a person. I just want to shout out to, uh, we have a former code enforcement building director, Glenn Kuchers in the back. He was with the township for quite a few years. You want to come up and say anything, Glenn? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, Glenn. Well, anyway, I just want to recognize you. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, next, we have a combination honoring Colleen Costello upon her retirement from Bristol Township. And I'd like to, we have a resolution here. I'd like to read it. Um, how's it coming up? Colleen. Yeah. Come on, Colleen. Yeah. You're always in the background. Come on, Kyle. Hi, Colleen. Hi. <laughs> so we have a resolution for you. Resolution number 2024-15, a resolution combination for Colleen Costello upon her retirement from Bristol Township after 37 years of service. Whereas Colleen Costello's employment with Bristol Township began on December 28, 1987, when she was hired as a licensed inspections clerk and whereas Colleen Costello spent her entire career in a building and planning department, and whereas Colleen Costello processed over 50,000 permits, 100,000 development applications during her career in the building and planning department, and whereas Colleen Costello did loyally and faithfully and beyond serve Bristol Township for 37 years, and where Colleen Costello's devotion to her job, her professionalism, were qualities that daily improved the public health, safety, and welfare of township residents, and I would include the business community, too. There, now, therefore, it be resolved that the Bristol Township Council does recognize and commend Colleen Costello for her 37 years of dedicated service to the township of Bristol and honors her on her well-deserved retirement. Resol resol yeah, resolved and adopted this 21st of day, March 2024. Congratulations, Colleen. Thank you. Thank you. We have a clap for you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, council members, Randy, and thank you to my family and friends for being here. I've loved working for the building and planning department and with my coworkers, some who I'm fortunate to call my lifelong friends. It was a pleasure working with all of you, and I thank you for that. And thank you for always remembering and honoring our grandson, Joey. Thank you again. I'll do this quick. One, two, three. Thank you.
Glenn, thank you. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. Good to see you. Okay, next on the agenda, we have blight recommendations. Bo? Good evening, everyone. My name is Bo Fleming, Building and Planning Supervisor for Bristol Township. We have five on the agenda tonight. Uh, as always, we started in 2015 with 204 properties. As it sits today, we are at 41 and decreasing. Hopefully, it stays that way. Start off. 2010 Liberator Street in Levittown. Property has been owned by the individual since 2016. Um, I've spoken to neighbors around that property. We have had no sign. We have had no contact from this ind individual by any means. There seems to be no one coming or going to the property. Township has been maintaining, cutting it last year. I have a feeling we will be cutting it again this year once the grass starts to grow. We do have delinquent taxes for 23. And we also have liens on the property as well, and they are accruing. Next slide will always indicate the pictures and how the home sits today. 10 Mimosa Lane in Levittown. Uh, this property was owned by individuals since 1961. I spoke to neighbors. They said that these individuals have not been at this home for some time now. It appears that no one is maintaining this home. Um, we did sticker this property in May of last year. We have had no contact in that time frame. We have delinquent taxes for 23 as well, and we do have liens accruing as well because we are maintaining this home. Next, we will have 1375 Monat. Um, some of you may be familiar with this property. This has been in and out of our blight system on our code enforcement radar for years. Um, every time we kind of get a little far into this process, the home ends up selling last minute and we have to start the whole process over again. Uh, the property sold last year in June. It's been vacant since that time frame. No permits turned in. We have no contact from the owner and the property sits uninhabitable at this time frame. Next property we have is 301 Old Rogers Road. Uh, we stickered this property in June. Of last year, zero contact with the individual. We did have some code enforcement issues pending with this property with one of our code enforcement officers. Uh, the hedges in the front, as you can see, are a view obstruction for many individuals turning onto Newportville Road. Uh, this home, according to the neighbors, has been vacant for many years. Uh, appears that this individual took on this property, planned to rent it out. It possibly was an illegal rental at one time. We are not sure yet, but at this time frame, it is vacant, zero contact. We have delinquent taxes for 22 and 23, and we do have liens on this property as well. Lastly, 1107 Thistle Street in Bristol. Um, this property was in a fire a couple of years ago. There was permits turned in for this property, as you can see in that sole photo the second floor addition there has been not one inspection on that home in over two years um, our police department is very familiar with this home and as of yesterday we actually served a, another search warrant and we boarded up this property for it being uninhabitable we have fire violations electrical violations and also the home is uninhabitable as well uh, there is um, Delinquent taxes for 23, and there are liens on this property as well. The number on that lien obviously is accruing because we did board it up yesterday. That'll Thank be you, it Bo. for tonight. I appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. Thank and you, running that by. Thank you, Bob. Brian. Thank you. Yeah, Bo. So I just want to express um, a testament to our department and to our employees. Um, Mr. Fleming has been um, at CHOP with his daughter and his family for the last uh, 72 hours and uh, a week beforehand um, Mr. Mateig was at CHOP with his son for a week so for the fact that they're here when I told them that I could handle the uh, the presentations is just uh, you know I'm really proud of our crew. Thank you. yeah. Thanks guys. <laughs> Next on the agenda we have public hearings and ordinances uh, we have three items here, A, B, and C. They're going to be continued. I'm going to read them off, and we'll 
put them, lump them together for a motion. So we have application of Oak Ridge Investments, 7998 New Falls Road, Levittown, requesting a zoning change from PO Professional Office to C Commercial in order to use the property in the future for commercial purposes. Located at Levittown Park Lake, Magnolia Turn, Levittown, tax partial number 5-46-222. Uh, the next one is uh, 6B, an ordinance of the Township of Bristol vacating a portion of, of 7th Avenue between the Haynes Road and Kenwood Drive South, a paper street in the Township. And the last one is 6C, application of ZRZ LLC, 500 Coventry Avenue, Croydon, requesting a zoning change. Hold on one second. Yep. For properties at 607 2nd Avenue, tax partial number 5-008-176, from R3 Residential to C Commercial and 612, 612 Coventry Avenue, tax partial number 5-008-177, from C commercial to R3 residential. So all of them, we need a motion to continue these three items. I'll make, I'll make the motion, Chris. I'll second it. Okay, uh, motion by Joe Glasson, who was second? Marcia. Okay. Second by Marcia Dunlap on the motion. Is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Okay, next we have an ordinance of Township of Bristol amending chapter 205 table of use regulations. Mr. Flager. Mr. President, Council. That's okay. This is an ordinance. It's just a cleanup. The Bucks County Planning Commission recommended we change. Is your our, microphone on? I thought it was. There it, there it is. is. Okay. <laughs> our table of use regulations did not match up with the zoning ordinance text. There's not, there's not one thing being changed here. It's just to make it easier so it's not confusing. So that the, the uh, table will tell you exactly what's in the zoning ordinance. Make it easier for the citizens. Thank you. All right, I'll make that motion. Motion by Cindy Murphy. I'll second that. Second by Ray Blaylock. Hi, Ray. Good. How's things down there? On that motion, do we have any questions? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. And next on the agenda is Community Developed Block Grant Physical Year 2024. Uh, good evening, Council. Good oh, evening. Good evening. Good, good evening. to see you, man. Good to be seen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Van Schultz, and I'm the Director of Community Development for Bristol Township. And tonight is a presentation of fiscal year 24 CDBG program as required by the HUD uh, regulations. Uh, fiscal 24 uh, is administered and uh, provided through a grant through, I'm sorry, from the, from, uh, from the Department of Housing and Urban Active De Development. Uh, it's calculated based on a formula basis for different communities, counties, and states. Uh, the funds are divided up in eligible activities and they must meet a uh, national objective. For this program year, uh, Congress has not, they've approved it, but has not been allocated yet. So we don't know the exact dollar amount, but they did approve uh, the, the, the bundle of, uh, of um, federal grants, but they have not allocated. So we're gonna be going off based off of last year's allocation from HUD. Okay. Next slide, please. As I stated before, CBG has to meet three national objectives to benefit low to moderate income persons, elimination of slum and blight, or urgent need. Uh, the ones that we always gravitate that works best for the township is to benefit low to moderate income populations. It can be achieved by doing area benefit, limited clientele, housing activities, housing activities, or job creation and retention. Next slide, please. For this program year, we're divided in basically in two different categories, public investment and housing. This is the, a breakdown of the use of the funds. We're using uh, uh, last year's allocation of $630,000 as, as a guidepost. Uh, we'll have 20% towards administration the public investment is in two categories with public service and public facilities. The last three will be housing. We'll be doing uh, rehabilitation, rental housing, uh, new housing construction, and our popular uh, emergency home repairs for our homeowners. Next slide, please. The emergency housing repair program is for income qualified Bristol Township residents. Uh, we do one repair uh, and it cannot exceed $10,000. Item B is the new housing construction. Uh, we're working with a, uh, a property owner 
to look to create new affordable housing in the township. In addition to that, uh, the property at 1237 Schumacher Drive and 1101 Terry Avenue, we're working with the Bucks County Housing Authority and their affordable housing provider to uh, bring that property online. It's new construction, single family dwelling. And then the third item for rental rehabilitation is a preservation of existing affordable housing. It's a housing complex with 15 units that was brought online 30 years ago. It's needing a new roof, windows, siding, and it'll be an uh, improvement and to address an existing environmental condition that is to the detriment for this facility. Switching to uh, public investment, uh, there's two items that we're doing in two areas. One is public service, and the other is public facility improvement. And the overall goal is to create a learning center to assist at-risk, low-income children in grades kindergarten to second grade to improve their academic performance. This support will be provided in the after-school program and the summer camp. Uh, this is a rendering that we've all seen in, <laughs> over the many years. But I'm happy to report that we're now uh, halfway through construction for the re renovation. That's the facade. Uh, and this is from the parking lot. The parking lot, uh, the ba stone base is in, ready for asphalt paving, and the curbing is in. Uh, this is an aerial view taken several months ago. Uh, and this is, oh, go back. This is where that, the house was acquired. And acquiring this, uh, this house allows for the creation of parking, all street parking for 19 cars. And the prior use, uh, before the township was involved, there was problems with parking on the street, congestion, and people would just stop in the middle of the road. But acquiring this property really helped the next phase as the township took over that we'll have all street parking, uh, the facility, and then the back is a playground area, 13,000 square feet of new uh, playground improvements. And here's just a graphic uh, of that area with the parking. We will have an enhanced entrance. We're building a vestibule for security purposes and uh, we'll have camera entrance. Um, Considering that we're dealing with young age children, it's going to be a secure way to get into the facility, identify yourself before they're allowed in. And in the back, you'll have um, 13,000 square feet of play area. Mm -hmm. Next slide, okay. please. This is a artist, render, artist rendering of the backyard. Uh, there has been some changes and improvements, but generally it will have a place, a safe, secure place for young children to play. This is the playground equipment that will be in the backyard also. This is inside rendering of the inside for the academic improvement for the children. Uh, we'll be working with uh, school educators and from the information that we're receiving from the school district, Bristol Township School District, is that the biggest impact is helping young children read because what they're experiencing is that when the children get to the upper grades, like third, fourth, and fifth grade, uh, they're having difficulties re reading, but we're now going to start working on the program to impact okay. their reading skills. Right. Concerning the building facilities, uh, a lot of work has gone into it. It was kind of like a can of worms. We started out <laughs> one way, but more we opened up things and see things. Uh, things just got added to the list, but these are must-do things uh, in the habit. So we have a new HVAC system, new air conditioning, new uh, lighting, Flooring, ceiling, new fire alarm and burglar system, new commercial kitchen. We have a new roof, 18 off street parking, enhanced card security cameras, uh, the play area, and the courtyard, and built a new vestibule. The interior is uh, 2,500 2, square feet of learning center. We'll have a separate room that it will be a computer lab and STEM uh, research and smart board. We also have a parent-teacher lounge when you just need to go off to the side for a minute and just have a conversation, but also have a computer terminal in there in case a, uh, a parent needs time to go online and do some research or other impact to help them with other in impacts, uh, things that they're doing in their lives. And then the program that we're looking to initially 
Medical school program and summer camp. Initially, we're looking at the child care works program that we're looking to launch in 2025. And then after that, we'll be looking at the 21st Century Learning Center, which is a much, a much more robust program to address the children's needs. Starting with the child care program, in which we'll be hopefully kicking off in 2025, there are strict requirements. Uh, the parents and the students come through the state. So the state screens them, see if they're eligible, and then the handoff is to uh, a facility such as the township. Uh, they must be income qualified. The state will pay 95% of the tuition. Uh, the parent must have a, ch the parent have a child in need of child care while they're working or attending an educational program. These are the requirements. So it's helping a, a low income parent that may not have all the wherewithals, but to help them to get them on their feet, maintain their jobs, or if they want to go and continue their education. And the requirements is that they have a uh, job and start within 30 days and or teen parents must attend an educational program. Uh, when this comes to fruition, won't happen maybe in the first year, but we see that there will be a huge economic impact where we can see 20 to 22 new jobs and hires and hiring local teenagers for the summer camp. Uh, this also has an economic impact where it helps parents to maintain an eight hour workday instead of trying to find childcare at three o'clock when the child is dismissed from school. They can come and pick a child up after they finish work. And it, as I stated before, you know, the uh, adult and teenage parents can attend an educational program. And again, this is, we'll be policed by the state, the early learning child care uh, program, state agency monitors the parent or the applicant and it's a handoff and we just work with, in collaboration with them. The funding for this is through various state and government agencies. It's listed there and just proud to announce that operating this, there's no local tax dollars. It's all from the state and federal grant government. And just in closing, uh, the goal and the target here is what we've learned is that in grades kindergarten to second grade, children learn to read. In grades three to 12, children read to learn. If a child can't read in third grade, they, third grade, they will not be able to read literature, science, social studies, and all other academic textbooks. Being able to read provides a foundation of all future learning. So that's very good. Thank yeah. you. Oh, and again, you. it's great to be part of it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Next, next on the agenda, uh, we have the consent agenda. Consider approval. Let me get closer. Consider approval of voucher list and requisition date at March twenty first, twenty twenty four, an amount of four million five hundred seventy nine thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars and ninety five cents. Consider approval of February fifteenth. 2024 council meeting minutes. That's it. Just them two. Did I miss? Oh, really? Okay. Thank, thanks, Cindy. Oh, got it. The blight. It happens. I was thinking we were going to, the blight would be different. All right. Next to consider resolution declaring 10 mimosa. Lane Levittown 19054, tax partial number 05-048515 is blighted in accordance with the urban redel revel yeah, redevelopment law. Consider resolution declaring 301 Old Rogers Road, Bristol 19007, tax map 05-058-105 is blighted. Consider resolution declaring 1107 Tissell Street, Bristol, 19007, tax partial number 05-065-130. As blighted, consider resolution declaring 1375 Minot Avenue, Croydon, 19021, tax partial number 05052081. As blighted, consider resolution declaring 2210 Liberator Street, Levittown, 19057, tax map 05040-281286 as blighted. And that's all, Mr. Mr. President. In yes. All, all of those in accordance with the urban, urban development, development law. law. 
Thank you, Mr. Flager. Thank you, Mr. Flager. Consider resolution for official sewage facilities planning module for Broadway Avenue and Miles Street subdivision in Bristol. And on all that, we need a motion. I'll make that. Who do we got? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mary Ann Wagner. I second. Second by Sandy Murphy. On a motion, is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Oh, anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flager, for. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a report from Township Manager. Yeah. Miss, <laughs> Miss, <laughs> Miss Mazur. Mazur. <laughs> yes, thank you, President Bowen. You're great, welcome. Great job thank so you. far. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I just wanted to uh, update a couple of things. Uh, Randall Avenue Bridge, we've had the um, contractors submit uh, a price. We're working through the agreements with Amtrak, um, and we hope to be able to come to an agreement and get the work started uh, potentially. Uh, we also have, um, as Brian had uh, discussed, Brian Morris, our Program Rec Director, we will have the concert tickets on sale uh, on my rec um, starting soon. Once the building is finished um, with the site work in front of the Park and Rec building, uh, that will have to, um, that, that'll probably open up uh, hopefully by camp, um, by camp time frame, and we'll have an open house uh, for the new park and rec building, which would be lovely. Um, one of the things that we're getting complaints on is uh, people are still putting bulk uh, out at their properties without calling it in and uh, without um, letting us know or their that their pickup time, they don't know that it's it's not just once a, a week anymore, it's once a month. So uh, Joan has been out on uh, medical leave, but when she comes back, uh, we're gonna start tagging um, any of the bulk items that are out prior to the week that it's allowed to be collected, as well as hand off the um, calendar again, because people are saying that they didn't get the calendar, which we didn't return any. Did all of council get your calendars from waste management? So, um, you know, that's what we hear all the time. Well, I don't know, I didn't get it. Well, I think most people threw it away. Um, so um, those are uh, just some of the updates and um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, report from township solicitor, Mr. Randy Flager. I have nothing further at this time, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next on the agenda on our new business, we have uh, two items, A and B. So it'll be 10 A and B will be continued. I'll read them off. Application of Bristol Reality, Realty Group, PO Box 5, Flower Town, PA, requesting final land development approval in order to construct a self-storage facility on a property located at 1502-1510 Haynes Road. Levittown tax parcel number 5-75-228 in a C commercial zone district. And the next one is application of ZRC LLC 500 Coventry Avenue. Croydon requesting preliminary final land development approval in order to construct two, three units, six unit total single family attached dwelling townhouses on a properties located at 612 Coventry Avenue tax parcel number 5-008-1. 77 and 607 Second Avenue, tax parcel number 5 008 176 in Croydon. So we need a motion to continue them two items. I'll make that motion. Chris. Motion by Joe Glasson. Who's second? I'll second. Second by Sidney Murphy on the continuation. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Next, we have Bucks County Consortium Road Materials bid. We need a motion for that. Want to name the information on it, or you just want a motion? Okay. Uh, it's very quick. Um, so it's run by the consortium New Britain Township. Uh, we are looking to award Eureka Stone Quarry as the low bidder. I'll make a motion for that. I'll second it. On a motion, uh, sorry about that, brain fog. We have a motion by Marion Wagner, second by Sydney Murphy. I got that right? Yeah. No, right? Good. Yep, okay. Good. On a motion. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. 
Yeah, anyone opposed to it? All right, thank you. Sorry, I was moving ahead on the agenda. Consider res revision to resolution 2022-90 to accept fee in lieu of mill and overlay of existing asphalt at the former Washington Elementary site, which is being donated to the township. You want to explain? No? Yep. Well, um, the theory here is that it, um, they originally agreed to mill and overlay Washington site for us. But after review, I'll, I'll let our engineers speak if they need to, it is better for the township to accept a fee in lieu in the amount of $50,000 as because we, then we can plan on what, how the park will be built and established at Washington. So this gives us flexibility, gives us the money to do it. And then you have more flexibility, so it's it's a it makes sense. I like that. I'll make that motion. Motion by Cindy Murphy. I'll second. It. Second by Joe Glass. On the motion, is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. And just so with those questions. Oh. Yes. Hold there's, on. Yeah. Marianne needs to abstain from that. So there, there's questions going around still of people asking. Um, you know, I hope a park gets built at Washington site. Um, for anybody that doesn't know. The, uh, the school district sold uh, Fitch, Washington, and Lincoln. Lincoln and Fitch are being developed, and Washington has been donated to the township, and we have a comprehensive plan out there, uh, which we're in doing safety upgrades to our parks first, and then we'll get a, um, a, you know, a plan out there, a concept plan, and um, you know, probably go out for grants for the, the park at Washington. Thank you. Next, we have a consider resolution for approval for the township solicitor to file a petition with the Orphans Court of Bucks County seeking a release of 3.042 acres of parkland, tax parcel number 05-072-113-001 from the requirements of the Dedicated and Donated Property Act. Mr. President, Council, Mr. Yep. President, Council, the, uh, this is the Fitch development. The, the, the original deed restriction comes from Bill Levitt, who gave it to the Levittown Public, Public Recreation, the LPRA, that we all swam in growing up uh, as kids, uh, to, re to require uh, our property near Fitch development to be used for recreation purposes only. The, do the Donated and Dedicated Property Act requires the Orphan's Court approval of the transfer of the property. We're gonna be receiving uh, from the Washington site 17 acres in exchange for the three acres that we're giving. But because it was given to us under this act, it's very stringent, you can't do anything unless you get court approval. Um, and so this won't be costing the town, this is on the developer's dime, but we'll be, we'll be spearheading that effort with, if council authorizes us to do so. We need a motion. I'll make that motion. Motion yeah. by Joe Glasson. I'll second it. Second by Ray Blackout. Ray Blaylock on the motion. Is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. I'll abstain from that as well. And she'll abstain. Thank, Thank you, Marianne. Next, we have cons consider human resources. Let me get to consider human services co responder initiative with the police departments of Bristol Barrow, Bristol Township, Tullytown Barrow, and the County of Bucks Human Services Division Memorandum of Understanding. You want to explain that? Thank you, President Thank Bowen. Uh, so as uh, Lieutenant Whittick had alluded to, we have been using, um, I, two years ago, we uh, engaged in a memorandum of understanding with the county and with uh, Tullytown and Bristol boroughs to have uh, two co-responders who were the first ones to, to join and share co-responders. Um, and they've been working out wonderfully. Uh, this, it, it, the agreement where the county uh, received a grant, they've been paying for the uh, co-responders that ended with the two-year agreement at the end of this month. So we are looking um, to file for a one-year um, or sign a one-year memorandum of understanding. Um, I think it's to, to make sure that we need two co-responders. We definitely would need one, um, but to see if we, uh, with Tullytown and Bristol Burroughs, uh, that two are, are necessary. So, uh, and that would be on a cost to the township um, and as well as Tullytown and Bristol Borough. I would like to make that motion. Motion by Mary Ann Wagner. I'll second it. Second by Joe Glasson on their motion. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. 
And next, consider resolution for TCDI planning grant, grant application. Sure, this is just a, um, it's primarily in, in Falls Township, but there's a couple of um, uh, canal towpath trail crosses. So um, the uh, East Coast Greenway and um, the PEC, uh, Pennsylvania Environmental Council, would be uh, applying for this grant. And there's three um, crossings in Falls Township, and then there's three, one on Haynes Road, one on Edgeley, and one on Airport Road to get to uh, the canal. So this would be uh, uh, for submission of the grant. Will you need a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Cindy Murphy. I'll second it. Second by Marsha Dunn. Marsha Dunn. On a motion, is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Next, we move to the other business. I just wanted to say one other thing because I did forget to say it under township manager. So we had a meeting today with um, DeLuca Homes, and they are going to be starting villas at Green Book on, um, August, or on April 1st. So construction will start, so people will see that. Uh, this is going to be until the whole orphans court and resolution is completed. Um, the township is going to be granting a construction easement over our four acres um, of property. Uh, and then um, it's a temporary construction easement, but we'll, we'll get the notices out to the residents as well, because that park will be closed um, while the construction is going on for, uh, for safety's sake. Thank you. Uh, next and, week and then it'll be a rebuilt park that, you know, on an acre by DeLuca Homes. Next, we have uh, comments from council members. Anybody have any comments? I'd just like to give a shout out to Marsha. This is where, to, as they say, the pavement meet, meets the road. Uh, a few weeks ago, she put together an organ, uh, a group to clean up uh, pretty much from Route 13 to Green Lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did 10 out, if you want to give 10 out of 10. She put it together. Yeah was very organized um and the, there was a lot of people there and it was amazing by the time we got down to green lane you turn around and it was a uh, rewarding to see um how good it looked yeah and yes, yes. yeah so yes, good. Yes. good job marcia i mean uh th that's your calling right there getting that putting that together <laughs> so um thank you marcia for doing that thank you anybody else before we move on Okay, next we have uh, opportunity for residents to address council. We have one name up there is Ray Jacker. Ray? Oh, hi, how you doing? Good. You probably heard this before. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Your name and, you know. My name is Ray Jacker. I live in Croydon, Old Croydon. Okay. And I'm here to talk about the trash, <laughs> uh, maybe how to organize some kind of cleanup. It's an embarrassment. It really Marcia, is. I'm embarrassed when people come into Croydon, first of all, down 13, our end of 13, from the bowling alley all the way into Old Croydon. It's filthy. <clears throat> I'm willing to help clean it up. My neighbors are willing to help clean it up, but I don't know how to go about organizing that. Or you can talk to gotcha. Marcia, can you speak to me? Yeah, she did a great job. Yeah. You know, I, I organize it. Work, so yeah. yes, what we do in the township, Cindy, if you want to. Okay. Yeah. What we do in the township and what we assisted, um, we the township will hand out um, to the residents that are, are going to do the cleanup, um, trash bags, um, orange vests, and gloves. gloves. And then you the cleanup occurs, and then all the bags get um, can be put wherever you know wherever the trash gets collected. The bags get put there, and the public works would pick them up. Right. So that's it's helpful. It's just you have to get the people. Right. And then how do I if I get the people? How do I organize it? You can, you, yeah, can you yeah, you can reach out to Lisa Strong in Public Works Department, um, and sh and just ask for uh, you you advise how much you need, how many gloves you need, vests, trash bags. And what about SEPTA? I know they take care of the train station. They do a good job taking care of that side, but where the bus stop is, the you know the SEPTA bus it stops right there on um, right. It's people leave trash in there all the time. Yeah, I, I have the same problem. I have a bus stop on New Falls Road, right by Dorm. I got to go out, pick up Not the trash. Not SEPTA at all, their responsibility, because it's... Well, 
you know. I don't know that they have the manpower. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Right, but they have a whole crew right there on this side of the street. You have the train station right, right. here, right. and then you have the bus. And right. it's funny because the trash that's all laying right here, they leave it while they just have their people picking up the trash right here, you know. What's that? Yeah. Okay. Maybe we contact the uh, SEPTA. Yeah, SEPTA. Okay. I wouldn't yeah. contact them. Yeah. All right. Them. That's it. Thank well, you. Thanks for coming. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We need more like this. Right. Exactly. Yes. I would say the trash is, it's just amazing. You know, I mean, I, I, when we cleaned it up, I just can't believe. Burger King, Burger King bags. bags. You know, the, 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 everything's 31. in it and they just throw it out the window. Like, I, I just have a hard time with that. Like, no respect, but it, and I don't see it. Especially, you know, you work hard. Yeah. To, I, yep. I own my own home. Yep. I work two jobs to pay for it. I clean my yard up. I yep. keep everything nice. Yeah. And it's just, I just, um, <laughs> people don't have respect, yeah. you know, so. Mm -hmm. The concern is with the cleanup, there's needles there. So right. how do you mm. do that? Yeah. We didn't see that. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, mm -hmm. why don't you hang out after we close the meeting, talk to Marsha, and we'll all be helping yeah, part of it. Awesome. With you. Thank you. Mm. Okay, on that, we need a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. Make I'll second it. Motion by Marion Wagner, second by Marsha Dunlap on the motion. Everybody in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Thank, every, thank you, everybody. We'll see you in a couple weeks.